Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's interview, I have Antonio Centeno, the founder of Real Men Real Style, where he helps men to improve themselves in just about any way imaginable. Antonio, welcome. Thank you, Rafael. Happy to be here. Wonderful. Okay, so Antonio, you have a really fascinating life story, and you're a self-made man and a YouTube style icon. Just give us a little background about yourself. Sure. I grew up in West Texas in a trailer park out there. Not much going on, not much style. And after that, I went to college up in Mount Vernon, Iowa, small town, middle of nowhere. And from there, I joined the United States Marine Corps. I was fortunate enough to be an officer of Marines. And at the end of 2003, after a fun vacation over in Iraq, I, I decided to get out and uh, transitioned out of the Marine Corps and lived in Ukraine for about a year, uh, married my fiance at the time, now my wife, we've got four young children and we just live here in uh, Wisconsin. But when I was in Ukraine, I was exposed to a culture that, you know, they really wear who they are, uh, you know, for, in their cars. And uh, I mean, it's the European culture, at least in that part of Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, I just found it, it's a very, appearances matter a lot in the Marine Corps actually appearances matter a lot. And uh, so I started seeing this thing, how appearances matter a lot in these situations. And I looked around and like, seems like a lot of Americans don't seem to believe that, or we're in a society that tells us this isn't the case. So kind of saw this amazing thing. And then I moved on, forgot about it, went, got my business degree at UT, uh, picked up my, after I picked up my MBA, I, I got a job out here in Wisconsin, was promptly fired. So I found myself in this opportunity. Hey, I'm out of work. Um, you know, I've got only have one, one child at the time, moving my wife to the United States, might as well start a company. So I started an online custom clothier in 2007 called a tailored suit. The business still exists, but now it's an information portal because what I discovered Okay, early on, I mean, that's, that's interesting. So you, you sure. have this exposure to style in the Ukraine basically. And so yes. then you said, Hey, that's interesting. And once you found yourself out of a job, I mean, was that the first thought that came to mind or did you kind of do some research or how did you end up with that business? Yeah, you know, I looked around at various opportunities and when I was at business school, uh, so I, I had a couple problems. One of the things is in Ukraine, I wanted a nice suit when I was getting married and it was hard to find a nice suit. There were these $100, $200 Russian suits, which fit you like squares and, but still, I mean, that was at the time and to me a lot of money. And still for like a lot of guys, it's a lot of money. Right? Yeah, it, it was just a square box. Or I went into this Italian shop and I looked at these, because you've got a very big disparity of incomes there. So you've got some of the, you got very cheap suits and then you have like $3,000 suits. I mean, it was like a huge jump. There was nothing in the middle. And when I put on that $3,000 suit, couldn't afford it, but I was like, wow, this thing is friggin' amazing. I didn't feel that good in a suit since wearing my uniform. And so oh, I wow. saw the power of like how a suit can make you feel. Um, I really wish I would have had that. I mean, I ended up wearing a modified square suit for my, uh, for my wedding. But a couple of years later when I'm interviewing at MBA programs and I was looking at, I mean, I flew out, looked at Harvard. Uh, I went and met with people at Harvard. I met with people at Cornell. Cornell actually flew me out because I was looking at their Johnson Means business program. So I, I figure like I'm going to these Ivy League institutions. I need to look the part and I didn't want to show up and look like some country bumpkin. Okay. And so what, what was your style, you know, at that time? Like I describe it to us. Pretty typical American. I wore light colored baggy jeans, uh, bright yellow, uh, you know, actually it's a Helly Hansen jacket, uh, flannel tops. I was wearing the same thing I'd worn in college and my style had not changed in the decade. I mean, when I was 18, what I pieced together and looked around in 1994 on that college atmosphere was what I was still wearing in probably 2002, 2003. And my wife, she was always a little bit like, well, he dresses very interesting. You know? like, but <laughs> I, I, I felt I dressed just like the typical American guy. And but I did know the power of a uniform because I wore a uniform when I was in the Marine Corps. I understand we paid attention to ranks. We looked at insignia. All of these things we made a determination. And so in the back of my mind, I knew it was real, but I didn't even know where to go to get this stuff really going. So that was, I think, the start of a tailored suit was actually probably a little, I went a little bit too far 
looking back, I mean, the business did not succeed because I wasn't ready to fully commit to buying a factory, but also there was a lot I had to learn. And that's really what that first company was for me. It was a learning vehicle. So I didn't end up, I didn't have this for my wedding, but I did have this for those MBA interviews when I flew over there is I found a traveling tailor right there in Kiev. He's uh, Imperial Tailors. They're out of Moscow and Kiev and, uh, and I think Minsk. And so these guys focused on that part of the world. And actually it was like pretty interesting. All their clientele was listed as all the presidents. So at the time in Ukraine, we had <laughs> Kuchma was, it's like they just basically, and, and so it's funny, like I call them up and I'm like, well, I, I wasn't, I didn't care about the price at that point. I had a little bit that I had put aside, was ready to spend it. So this traveling tailor is probably, he comes out to our apartment, like in the middle of, you know, it, right there in Kiev, and it probably doesn't get too many calls to these areas. But yeah, I bought a suit and I bought three shirts and it fit me better than anything I could have bought locally off the rack and it fit me just you know just as well as that three thousand dollar suit and i only paid a thousand like twelve hundred bucks at the time for that little packaging still a lot together. of money for kiev and stuff but yes they just said you know it was worth it to you and then it made a difference okay yeah i mean it, it fit the middle i mean actually i felt like i got a great deal because i felt like i was able to replicate the feeling i got from that three thousand dollar suit and I also got three shirts thrown in with that at one third the price. So when I saw this, it just opened my eyes to, wow, the world of custom clothing. Wouldn't it be cool if like this was an online business? Okay, opportunity seen. I trip over, you know, amazing opportunity. I get up, act like nothing happened, keep walking. You know, two, two years later, I think about this again when I'm at business school and I find another custom clothing there in Austin. I'm going to UT right there in Austin, Texas. And I see this again and I'm like, you know, I talked to the tailor. I bought him lunch multiple times. Every time he was in town, he came back like once every couple months and I just picked his brain. And I, and I found out the guy had like a fourth grade education, was only working half of the year and was making about half a million dollars a year. And I'm like, you know, like that I like pretty good, right? That's pretty wow. cool. Yeah. I, I, I'm like, wow, that, that's, I mean, you, what are you telling me? I'm getting this fancy degree and I'm about to go sell my soul for golden handcuffs and only get paid 150,000 a year. And you know, it's like, if he can do this with a fourth grade education, and, I mean, was, Jack was a really smart guy over at, uh, you know, Noble House Tailors. Uh, I don't even know if Jack Bellani even is in this industry. He was looking to sell at the time. And I remember he was, he was even curious about like, Hey, you want to buy my Rolodex? Cause it took him 35 years to build up 5,000 customers. And from a, my perspective, it was like, well, couldn't you, maybe you could do the shortcut this, like you could use the internet and you could get those 5,000 customers in a period of just a couple of years. Cause a lot of times people think, you know, where did you learn all of this? You know, I mean, you said to yourself, you know, you grew up in a trailer park and not being exposed to that. So you didn't have that, but you still, went into that space and realized I can create content. So how did you learn that stuff? And uh, what can you tell others who are maybe in a similar situation where they're not sure about what to do and like, yeah, tell them how you do well, I think the answer is like right behind you, all those books, you know, I'm looking at right here. And I mean, I'm a big believer of a man needs to take time to educate himself and spend time going and thinking, reading and learning. I mean, there's just so much information out there. It's funny. I talk with a lot of other style bloggers and, or people ask me, Hey, did you ever take courses on this stuff? It's like, yeah, I, I took enough courses to realize that that is not, that's just one path to learn. And so, I mean, I've got a whole, my whole library. You've, I think you've seen that, that hidden closet. It's just oh, books yeah. and books and like books. I read a lot of books just, just like I do, you know, it's, it's yeah. stuff. And I was just in Florence and, you no, know, we were we were there, and people walked up to me, and they recognized me, and they, you know, they asked a few questions, and then they were like, "Oh, you know, one final question. I noticed the information even on your website. You know, it's like unique. It's not. It just doesn't come from other pages. Like, where do you get that from?" And I said, "You know, I have books, I have magazines, I built this library, and 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 so they noticed, you know, because it really made us stand apart because yeah. we just copy stuff, and it, it's similar to you. Like, if you kind of dig a little deeper." And, and you educate yourself, which basically is an investment in yourself, you can produce great stuff.
and it's really hard because uh, we're we're surrounded in a in a society, and, and to some ways we are on social media. I'm on social media for work, but personally, I have no social media connected to my phone. Uh, my house, I have no computer. Like all of my business stuff stays here in the office, and when I go home, I'm there. So I try to create these barriers, which enable me when I come here to focus in on. And I'm going to steal this from Cal Newport: uh, deep work. You know, being able to go in, and I think that's the key. If you want to really create something the world's going to take notice of, you've got to commit to that deep work of spending the time to focus in on yourself instead of doing all that busy work. Because no one's going to, I mean, yeah, that's cool that you got to inbox zero and that you answered 50 emails today, but did that really make a, did that have a big impact? Uh, a project I'm currently working on is creating a new email sequence, a an, an amazing one, because I want people when they sign up for my emails to be wowed, not just sold to, which right now I feel like our email sequence is a bit hard on sales. And then I put them into a great broadcast sequence, but a broadcast sequence, as you know, is something you got to do again and again. So to be able to create something that is going to last like a book, a book is, is a perfect example. Anyone that's ever written a book realizes it's an all-consuming event, especially if you're going to you know, write a great book. And it's something that any great writers from Stephen King to J.K. Rowling, they talk about how they have to separate themselves. I was just reading about uh, Mark Twain. He basically was so isolated when he was writing the, the, the adventures of uh, Huckleberry Finn or, or Tom, the adventures of Tom Sawyer that he – he literally, like, they would have to blow a horn on this farm he was at in New York, in New York, upstate New York, to to let him know, hey, come eat a meal because you've been out there for so long in this isolated cabin. Oh, and totally, and, you know, like when when we started, you know, there weren't things out there. You know, we we looked into books because there wasn't anything out there. Forums just started about the top. Yeah, I mean, today, you know, all the things we've we've learned, right, over. 15, 20 years, we put into a product because we realized, hey, you know, those were all the mistakes we made. And ideally, we, we, we shouldn't have to make them. So if we just guide people in a way and then give them the best um, solution to their problems, they can save a lot of time, save a lot of money and still get the same result um, that took us so long. Yeah, and I think that that's in, really enjoyable when you get these emails from guys that use your courses or use your free information. Both of us put out so much information that even if you're in India and you have a you know you're making let's say a thousand dollars a month and and you're doing you know it's just not enough though that you want to spend five hundred dollars on one of my courses. You're like okay, you know I'm going to or you can't come out to StyleCon in Atlanta, Georgia, which is our conference. You're, you could use all of my information and you could change your life and improve it. And next time I'm out in Mumbai, you know, we'll be able to meet and you'll be able to shake hands and talk like old friends, which is really cool. I love it when, and you've had people recognize you. It's amazing when you can talk to them, like you start the conversation, not at point zero, but D it's like we can, they know they, they've watched many of your videos or, or they've read your articles and they, they can start at the very deep level and i just love those type of conversations okay and you know like i think just the name of your website real men real style you know real it's not just about being authentic but also having a, a real connection and i think um you started as a website but then you realized hey maybe we could create this real connection in the real world and so um together with aaron marino another youtube heavyweight you decided to create a real life event. Like, tell us a little more about that and why you did it and, and what the goal of it is. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that. I, I actually, for me, uh, the real men, real style was kind of a rejection of, I mean, runways are interesting in the fashion world, but I honestly still don't understand them and I how things move through that in that industry. And I wanted to just be really clear with guys that hey, I'm just a regular guy. I probably could have said regular men, regular style, but it was too long. Real just worked better. But you're exactly right. I got, I reached out to Aaron Marino. I, I just found that I really enjoyed speaking and talking with all of my peers. But that only went so far because even on a group call, people are getting distracted. We're not in the same place. And there's just something. I was already going to conferences. And I looked around. And I'm like, why isn't there a conference that – 
you know, brings together my friends, the kind of people that I really connect with. Because I always found when I went to these conferences like New Media Expo, Social Media Marketing World, uh, Infusion Con, that it, it's I, I was in a small, there was only like 5% of the people that I would really connect with. And I'm like, well, what if I brought all those people to my own conference? And that's, uh, I think that's the beauty of what we do. There's so many different, uh, depending on who you want to be inspired by or who you want to go to for information. I mean, if somebody is interested more in classic style, they want to learn about black tie, white tie, they want to learn about the history of menswear, they're going to go to your channel. If they want to learn about the history, but they also want to learn about the science, maybe the military history, they want to you know, be immersed in, in very simple how to do videos, but still may blow their mind, like how to tuck in your shirt, they can go to my channel. If they want more, something that's a bit more fashion forward, they want something that's going to be a bit more entertainment, uh, but still very educational. Go check out Aaron Marino. They, you know, there's just so many different options out there, and that's what I love about our industry. Yeah, and it's not exclusive, you know. Just because you you like Antonio doesn't mean you cannot like Aaron. And you know, ideally, you, you watch all of them and, and get something out of each of them. And well, then some my website one person cookie it's more with one person, and, and I think that's that's, that's good. My website does put a cookie on people's computers that blocks your website. So. Oh yeah, well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I mean, just listening to you talk about your business, you obviously have lots of systems in place, and that's great. But for most people, probably, you know, it sounds like that's more than enough. You, on the other hand, you know, uh, say, well, maybe I can do something else, and you even have like some side businesses. Like, tell us more about that. Sure. So I've got uh, one program called High Speed Elite, and uh, basically this is a coaching program for business, or, or it's it's a business coaching program for military veterans only. And I have two other partners with that: John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire and Tom Morcus uh, of Insurgent Publishing. And the reason I did this, a couple reasons: one, I wanted to I. I I really loved my time in the Marine Corps and I wanted something that I could do to give back that I controlled. So this coaching program is a great way to do that. Uh, the other one is I wanted to partner and hang out with other veterans I respect. So both John and Tom, I learned from all the time, amazing people, and I'm happy to be able to support them. So that's what I love about business is when you make it fun, you're able to do good and you're able to learn and sharpen your own sword. Um, I also run a business with my wife called uh, Bilingual Kids Rock, which we help families create systems so that they can raise bilingual children. And uh, my wife has a podcast with that. She puts out a lot of content. And, and yeah, so that one's at more of a passion project. We have four young children who are trilingual and uh, they speak Ukrainian, they speak Russian, they speak English. And we've tried bringing in Spanish, but I mean, it's hard uh, with all these other activities. But well, the point is, you know, I mean, that's amazing. You know, it's already like three languages. And, you know, it seems like you take everything that you've experienced, like you have the, the style that we were exposed to the military. The, the children and, 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 and languages and you kind of try to make it into a business and something and help others, which is amazing. Well, it's, and it's, you can approach it from a very selfish perspective too. Uh, Anne Rand, you know, when she wrote uh, the, the Virtue of Selfishness, I really enjoyed that book back in college because it, it showed that even when you do good, Oftentimes you can do good, but you can do it in your own way so that you get a lot. The value I get from creating that content is that we sit, we, we put, we crystallize our thoughts and I'm able to put this out there and put it out there once. And I can even revisit what my wife has written or what we've written at Bilingual Kids Rock so that I've learned a lot more about how languages develop in children. And it's, you know, we can reach out to, because we've also got this platform, we can reach out to language experts who want to come in and interview with my wife so that they can get in front of her audience. The selfish thing for us is we can ask very specific questions about our kids with world leaders on that particular subject. Exactly. So, uh, so you get a free yeah. consultation, basically. Exactly. Because then you learn on your own. And not just that's free, a, we get that's a good way to think. Yeah, not just free, we get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, even better. So, you know, living in rural Wisconsin, uh, your style, you know, is probably not in a three-piece business suit every day. And today you're wearing like a denim shirt. So what would you say, you know, are your like five staple wardrobe items that, that you couldn't live without? Yeah, you know, I'm pretty casual uh, and I'll, I'll take this during the winter. So sweaters, I have a great collection of sweaters. Um, 
and I've just, it's funny, I had them all rebuilt the air and sweater market over in, uh, the, the, in Ireland. Uh, great, you know, they, I had them as a sponsor a while back and the best thing I got from them was all these sweaters. And I love sweaters here in central Wisconsin. The other ones for me are thermals. So I know, I don't know if you've worked with, uh, with Tanny yet, uh, Adam over there, but you, you need to, because, uh, this guy is, I, I've got these amazing, th like, I just really like, I like simple things, but I like them to be the best. And he, I've got some pair of his thermals on. I'm just like, oh, they're like butter. I, it's just awesome. Another thing, nice socks. Uh, it's it's funny. Like I made, I, I used to have those tube socks all the time. Yes. And to actually have nice pairs of wool socks that feel great. My only thing with them is I like to wear them around the house now. And they, I, I'm always worried I'm going to get them snagged and tear a hole in them. Uh, let me see. I I have to admit I I wear jeans quite a bit. Uh, and then uh, I wear uh, sports jackets. So I get a lot of my sports jackets uh, from Suit Supply. Uh, they just fit me really well off the rack, but I've got a number of them custom made as well. Oh, of course, uh, you wear custom clothing. I mean, uh, you probably exactly. need some out of that. So that makes yeah. sense. Good. All right. So now there's a set of questions we always ask people. So it's just quick yes or no, or just sure. play whatever you want. It's like sure. Oxford or Derby? Oxford. Um, flannel or worsted? Flannel. Necktie or bow tie? Necktie. Belt or suspenders? Belt. Barrel cuff or French cuff? Barrel cuff. Undershirt or no undershirt? Undershirt. Off the rack or custom? I will go with off the rack. Yeah. And it's great if you have the you know the figure for it and it works. That's easy. Yeah, if you, you find, it, if you find the right brand, it can really. It, it's just a great deal. Totally. Uh, for me, it just you know it's very difficult because my shoulder is so much lower and depends on your body, depends on the person. Yeah. But um, you always have to start somewhere. And right to wear is great because you see it right there. You can feel it. You can say I don't like it. If you go custom, sometimes you can just envision it and then you get it and it's not what you thought it would be and. It yeah, can yeah. be very costly when you make mistakes. Okay. So, Antonio, I mean, thank you very much for, for your time. I think it was very insightful and people maybe got to hear some things they didn't know about you. But um, where do you see yourself in five or ten years down the line? You know, that, that's that's a great question. I would say I, I know that, you know, time waits for no man. I'll be almost 50 years old at, at that point. Um, so... You know, I would like to be in a place where I can do, I can travel more and spend more time with the people whose lives I'm, uh, I feel I'm lightly touching. I would like to go deeper with the guys and the women that are interested in talking more about this. So I would see myself traveling and making myself more available, maybe in cities uh, that you know, maybe my audience, we can set something up so they vote where we go to actually engage with people. I think StyleCon is, it's too bad it's only once a year. I would like something where, hey, you know, every couple months we're hosting an event and maybe they're a bit smaller, but I think one day events that just have a deeper connect with people, maybe in New York or Los Angeles or Milan or London. Uh, I have, I'd love to be able to go to, you know, back to, I love Mumbai, uh, places where, you know, it, it's, I think we could really just reach a, a global audience. I think in, in person would be great. That's that's fantastic. That's a good you know a good approach. And you obviously you know you you really love what you do, and I can see that. And that's that's the way you think, and you want to combine it and travel and educate yourself. And I think that's yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Raphael. Well, I appreciate your friendship, and uh, looking forward to seeing you out in Atlanta. Yeah, absolutely, I'll be there. And uh, if you want to meet Antonio or me, or all the other guys, Aaron Marino, Andy from A Primer, Baron from Effortless Gent, and uh, Brock from The Modest Man, Tanner from Masculine Style, and many others. You should uh, check out the website, the Men's Style Con, and yeah. it's, it's something for you. I enjoyed it immensely last year, and I'll be there for sure. Yeah, you know, it's a. I wanted to create a conference which didn't suck. It's really, it's my excuse to throw a three day party to hang out with my friends, and uh, you know, it's like, hey. Costs are covered. I like it. <laughs> Perfect. So to parties that don't suck. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Raphael. Thank you for having me. Thanks a lot.